today, as usual, in all cases I handle, God was again on the throne to do what he knows how best to do and throne justice and fair play to ensure that his creatures and creation do his bidding. It is in Lamentations 3, 37, who is he that speaketh, and it cometh to pass, if God has not commanded it? Today, this court, the Honorable Justice Bintanyaku, granted all the reliefs sought for by Mazi Namdekano before the court. The young Nigerian patriot, Igbo's self-determination, Zah, who was extraordinarily, illegally, unconstitutionally, torturously, brutally renditioned from Kenya back to Nigeria on the 27th of June, 2021. Today, the court agreed with us that the reliefs we asked for must be granted, and the job granted, what were these reliefs? That now the canoe be allowed access to medical doctors of his own choice, as earlier also ruled by this honorable court since October 2021, but which ruling was continuously, serially, and contumaciously breached by the SSS. Today, the court ruled that he was entitled to have access to his medical practitioners of his own choice, and that these medical practitioners should be present whenever any examination or procedure is to be done on Mazi Namdi Kanu outside the facilities of the SSS. And that such examination or procedure should be recorded. Should be recorded. She made that order. She also made the order that all his medical records should be made available to him. Because in any event, it is the right of a patient to have access to and see his medical records so that he can always have a review and update on these medical records. She couldn't see why such a simple demand should be denied him. the SSS had filed a preliminary objection that this action was similar to the one earlier filed before this court and also before the court in Umuahia, Federal High Court. The court held that that was not true, that the parties may be similar, but that the course of action was certainly different. Because in that action, Mazin Namdi Kanu had sought for the enforcement of his fundamental human rights, which were granted by the Federal High Court in Umuahia, sitting in Umuahia. And guess what? 
the court had imposed a fine, damages of 500 million naira against the federal government of Nigeria, which, as I speak to you, has never been paid. I may begin to take steps to enforce that judgment. Since the Olive Branch we have held out in the last two years has not been responded to. But that, on the other hand, the case before this court today was for an order of mandamus to compare a public agency which is the DSS to carry out its duty which it has refused to carry out as laid down by law after we wrote them letters, two letters in October and November 2022 urging them to carry out what the court has today granted. They refused. So the court held that the two suits were different one from the other. And that the earlier judgment before the Federal High Court, Umwahia Judicial Division, is not the same as the judgment she granted, she delivered today. So the court granted all our reliefs. Now the colonel should now have access to his medical records, which so far have become a voodoo, which so far have become a mirage, which so far have become like an apparition, like a ghost, which so far have become like a subject matter of witches and wizards operating in a coven, not being seen by the patient himself, Mazin Nam by his by his parents, by his family members, by we, his lawyers, we will now have access to these medical records. We want to know what is it that the SSS has been hiding? Why is his potassium level oscillating like a yo-yo? And they increase the dose, dosage now and again. Why have they made now the canoe a guinea pig of trial and error? Why has it now the canoe not been well? Why did it develop earache, which now requires an urgent surgery? Recommended by the DSS medical doctor himself. A team of medical doctors of the DSS have now recommended that this guy's ear is failing and must be operated upon immediately. Otherwise, he will lose it. Why is his heart not in position? A heart that suffers missteps. A heart that suffers palpitation. A heart that was made worse through the torture he went through in Kenya when he was captured, kidnapped, abducted, kept in a dingy confinement for eight days, blindfolded, chained, and then extraordinarily renditioned in a private jet back from Kenya to Nigeria since June 27, 2021. What is it that you have been hiding? We will now get an erode, jud, an erode copy of this judgment of today. It's not a ruling, it's a judgment. We will enroll it and write a formal letter to the DSS. Between June 27 and now, today, the 20th day of July, 2023, two years later, we want to see the records of Namdi Kano. We want to see what has been happening to his body. Because there are no two human beings. Once you die, you are gone forever. So this judge must be commended for her continuous courage and bravado 
in these times that try men's souls, in these times that try women's souls, to the extent that our earlier judgment was not only upheld by the Court of Appeal on the 13th of October 2022, but that the Court of Appeal went ahead to strike out the remaining seven count charges that she had remained. And by the way, the same federal government in an unprecedented manner went to the same court of appeal before another panel to obtain a stay of execution in a criminal matter using, using civil authorities, civil rules and authorities to obtain stay of execution in a criminal matter, in a matter, in a way and manner that is unprecedented, uncharted. We, would, we have testing that already at the Supreme Court. Can you stay execution of the liberty of a citizen? America will go out of its way to any country in the world to go and take out its own citizen. But here we have a Nigerian government staying the execution of the relief to release its own citizen, saying your fundamental rights should not be enforced. A government, a whole government that should protect its citizen, a government that has been defiant against reason, against sense, against sensibility, against good conscience, against morality, against the OAU advice, that in the canoe be released. He has told me as his lead counsel, as his lawyer, that he does not believe in it, that he cannot be fighting for his people and be shutting down their economy. How do they feed? How would they train their children? Many a time he cried to me in my presence that he wants to be released so that he can hold a world press conference and address the indigos and the allegos and the entire world to say, don't stay at home on Mondays, go about your normal duties, walk. Because the Bible tells us it is upon the fruits of your hand. I will bless you the labor of your hands. So I'm now re-echoing it again and again what now the canoe has told me. He does not believe in that seat at home on Mondays which cripples the social, economic, cultural, political life of the people, putting them under psychical, psychological, mental, structure and torture. And the point must again be made, even if for the opting time, for record purposes, because they are, all, they are bound in a large number what to call historical revisionists who would want to revise history and make us to have selective amnesia or make us to be like the bones of European history that learned nothing and forgot nothing to the extent that even after the Treaty of Versailles in 1918 during the end of the First World War leading to the enactment of the League of Nations. The Second World War still broke out between 1940 and 1945, which now led to institutionalization of the United Nations Organization in 1948. What is that truism? It is that Nnamdi Kanu was granted bail, and he was enjoying the bail acceding to all the conditions of the bail. He did not jump bail. He remained in Nigeria. His case was to come up sometime in October. But between 14th and 17th of September, 2017, particularly on the 17th, the, particularly on the 14th, the federal government, through Operation Python Dance 
a python that never danced against Boko Haram, a python that has never danced against armed bandits, a python that has never da danced against kidnappers, a python that has never danced against hunger, against quello, against abject penury, a python that has never danced against a pilot's economy, pilot's economy, against, against a pattern that never danced, against corruption, which has made Nigeria one of the most corrupt nations in the world, number 148, and the second most corrupt country in West Africa. Inam the Kanu was in his ancestral home at Afarauku, Ibeko, Umwahia, Abia State.